Уважаемые телезрители, и вновь в эфире телеканала М1 Global прямая трансляция турнира ММА серии 15. Время новых героев из города Санкт-Петербург. И сегодняшний турнир продолжает следующий бой в легчайшей весовой категории. В синий угол клетки приглашается боец из города Ташкент. Встречайте, Шахрух Азаматов! You're watching MMA Series 15, Time of New Heroes. We're live from St. Petersburg, Russia, and brought to you by the Fubo Sports Network and around the world on the Clash TV app. I'm Ian M16 Butlin, and this is the final fight of our undercard. Chokru Shax Azamatov making his way down to the cage. Shax started his MMA professional career with two decision losses. But we saw him win last time out on the MMA Series 8 by TKO. Nice to get himself onto winning ways. And I'm sure he'll be intending to keep that going. You see the hugs and good luck from the corners. And as always, let's have a look at what happens here at cage side. The checks of the gloves, the protective equipment being the gloves, the wraps, the gum shield and the groin guard. And then just checks over the body for any excess oils that are added below the neckline. A prayer there from Azimatov as he prepares for this bout. So his opponent making his way down to the cage for this banterweight contest, Igor Koroshilov. Koroshilov making his debut here tonight on the MMA series. This young man, what a great stage to make your debut on. Shown around the world, great production. And although you're gonna get the pressure, I think, for any young fighter, the nerves, the feeling going in for that first fight. This is it's so great and on a big stage like this, he is going to be buzzing. A little bit of butterflies in the stomach there as the Vaseline is applied to the face. But well prepared and ready for action. If you're watching at home on the Clash TV app, make sure you score these fights. Clap for your favourite fighter. Discuss in the chat room and ask any questions of anything I say or anything you think about. Well, the chrome shield is added. Drink of water. I know that feeling of the dry mouth with the adrenaline before you get into these contests. As you see there, he's chosen not to wear the bandages where we saw Azimatov had quite heavily bandaged hands so that can sometimes show a difference in the game plan. Heavily bandaged maybe want to punch a lot, whereas the bandages can stop the grappling. So maybe that's a slight indicator of what we're going to see. So here we go, MMA Series 15, Time of New Heroes. Final instructions from Vasilev Kiselev there, our referee. 
And this is MMA Series 15, Time of New Heroes. We have Azimatov in the blue corner. Kodoshilov in the red as the cage door is closed. And will that show a little indication? I've made the little comment there about the bandages. Azimatov heavily bandaged hands. Kodoshilov chose to go without the bandages. So will Azimatov in the blue be favouring the striking? Let's see how the action goes as both start out quite fast. Azimatov closed the distance as the back was turned by Koroshilov. Looking to get control now. He's got both arms under. He was bringing one leg around there as a hook. Now he's chosen to go for the, the Vianiki choke there without getting the, the leg of the hook in. So easily defended by Koroshilov who could turn into him because there was no leg control. Koroshilov's left his head in for the guillotine now, the arm in guillotine. Koroshilov working, he tried to escape, got his hands up onto the gloves and then goes for the trip himself. As Azimatov was playing with the gum shield there and it just really put him off the defense of the takedown. The gum shield, I think, or putting your own gum shield in should definitely come after defending the takedown. Now he's going to end up, he's on the floor underneath side control. So good position, but Azimatov has got both underhooks here. Can he use them to try to escape? He needs to try to bridge up, try to come out that back. Use the right underhook and, and bridge over. At the moment, that's ground and pound, good heavy. Ground and pound from the right elbow of Igor Koroshilov. Again here, Azimatov has that right underhook. His escape is just to bridge over and try to get out of that side. If I was Koroshilov, I'd be wanting to break that grip and try to get my left arm underhooked on that right arm to secure his position better, which he's done there. You see, he's got the arm under. And now this is a more solid side control position as he's got the underhooks now. Good work there from Igor Koroshilov. And for, for Shaks Azimatov, he's lost a good chance to escape from this position. Is Koroshilov going to look to work to the mount? Sliding the hand over, trying to use that left arm. Working just to pressure the neck as he goes back to that ground and pound with the elbow. So again there, see Shaq's trying to get the left knee in. He's trying to turn into him, put the left knee in. But it's well defended. As Koroshilov works his knee back up to the hips and stops him being able to get the knee and elbow together in that position. Shaks are looking for just to try maybe a counter with the Kimura from that position. But now looking to attack the far arm is Igor Koroshilov. They'll be looking to put the wrist flat to the floor and try to get the elbow up. Still dominating this side control. Good control. He's moving well with the hips, moving his knee in, stopping any sort of defense from the position. And there, as we see the stats, Koroshilov thrown more, landed more, and dominated position all the way through. That's giving away an armbar attempt there, but he drops back down to the floor. His elbows firing into the cheek there. Again, looking to tie up the arms, looking for an opportunity to submit. Very dominant, good control, but not looked close to finish. He's not got really any damaging strikes. These are fairly heavy. It's a, a heavy elbow that drops down from that position, but not when you when you chest to chest. If he gets his hips closer to the ground and his shoulders up, he can get a lot more power into the strikes from this position. But he's doing a good job of moving the hips. That's better work. He's pinned the arm 
and he can fire unanswered shots straight into the face, the middle of the face there of Azamatov. It's been beautiful control from the side control. You should see the movement of the hips, the knees in, and not really taking, taking any risks as he there pins the arm and lands clean shots again. So a very dominant round for me on my card for Igor Koroshilov. Here we see the replay. Koroshilov got that takedown to side control because Asmatov was playing with his gum shield, trying to get his gum shield in. He's going to regret that because the rest of the round, he was eating elbows and punches from his side control position. As we come up now for round number two, look at that. It's going to take some coming back for Azamatov there. They really tell a story, those stats. 30 strikes thrown, 22 landed, such a high percentage. And it does show you there, when you throw 30 strikes standing, you may be going to get 20, 15, 20 landing. On the floor, when you've pinned someone in position and you throw 30 strikes, you're getting a very high percentage landing. You're watching MMA Series 15, Time of New Heroes. We're live from St. Petersburg, Russia. I'm Ian M60 Butlin. We're on the Fubo Sports Network and around the world on the Clash TV app. You're watching Azmatov in the blue and Koroshilov in the red. Azmatov's got some work to do to come back from that first round. Koroshilov looking to get the takedown, and he has, but this time he's in the full guard. Let's see if Azmatov can work better from the guard than he did from side control. Gets the legs up. Koroshilov looking to step in, part of the hip, looking for what the movement is. Looking to see how Azmatov reacts. Using the chopping strikes into the leg. Vashislav Kislev seen enough and stands them back up to continue the action standing. Nice body kick from the lead leg, switch and then kick. So there you see the difference in the stats. Azamatov, who's thrown most of his strikes from standing, a lot smaller percentage landed. As we see the bullying of Koroshilov past the legs and into the half guard position again. And this time he's got the leg locked up, the arm, sorry, locked up between his legs. He looks for the Americana. He needs to get his left elbow to the floor if he's going to finish this submission. His left elbow, that's on the floor now. And he can look to slide the hand down. That's a good position. He's allowing the bit of body movement there. If he can pin the body down. That's it, and he's got the finish. Americana submission there for Igor Koroshilov. Got the elbow to the floor, pinned the body, and then it's just the grinding of the knuckles down the floor and gets the finish. So the scores for the guys at Clash TV app, 532 for Asmatov, 456 for Koroshilov. That is not how I saw it with the ground control. But again, shows how different people watch the fights. For me, Koroshilov, that ground control, the strikes on the floor. And then a great submission finish. And here we see the replay of this bantamweight contest. Take down to side control. This is what started the great work here. Koroshilov pinning the arms, working the strikes with a punch and the elbow. If he couldn't get the distance for the punch, he landed the elbow. Nice step back there. Lands the right hand into the clinch. And then look at this Americana. As soon as he pinned the body and got the elbow to the floor, it was as good as over. And the tap there coming from Shorok Asmatov.